Let's learn how to multiply two two-digit numbers when one of those two-digit numbers is a multiple of 10. And we're going to do it by using arrays so you can understand what's going on. Using the example 30 times 16, 30 is the two-digit number that is also a multiple of 10 because 3 times 10 is 30. 16 is not a multiple of 10, but as long as one of our two-digit numbers is, then we can use this method to solve them easily. You can think of this problem as 30 times 16 written this way, or the standard algorithm way, or the expanded algorithm way looks this way too. Um, you can write it either way. Think of it either way. It doesn't matter. Remember, it could also be 16 times 30. We would still get the same answer. What we're going to do is take the two-digit number that is not a multiple of 10, so in this case 16, and we're going to break it apart. Kind of think about it as um, e expanded notation. 10 plus 6 instead of 16. We've done this before. Nothing new. What we'll really be doing then is thinking of the problem as 30 times 10, because we broke apart the 16, and 30 times 6. We'll be solving two separate problems. 30 times the 10 and 30 times the 6. So let's move these out of the way and we're going to draw some arrays out here so you can see what's going on when we multiply. Remember, a 10 by 10 square has 100 sections in it. Remember we're using those base 10 blocks and we proved that every time we made 10 blocks, we would make a row of 10, and then 10 of those rows of 10 would make 100. Well, that's what we're dealing with here. Except that we need three of those base 10 blocks because we're dealing with 10, 20, 30 times 10, right? 30, there's our 30 times 10, there's our 10. So this rectangle itself is a 30 by 10 rectangle. That is going to give us one of our partial products. And that partial product is 300. You can think of it as, remember, 3 times 1 is 3, two zeros, 300. Which in our mind is going to be the first partial product. When we were doing expanded form with a single digit down on the bottom, we would write the two partial products down here. Same thing. And now that we've taken care of the first partial product, now we're going to do the second, 30 times 6. Here's our 30, and now I have 6 rows of 10, which is 180. 6 times 3 is 18. It's in the tens column. The 30 is in the tens column, so we put the 0 at the end. makes it 180. We now have our two partial products, 300 and 180 which, like we did before, we're going to add together. So here's our 30 times 6. Here's our 30 times 10. We found those two partial products. And now that we have those two partial products, we're going to add them, starting in the 1's column. 0 and 0 is 0. In the 10's column, 0 10's and 8 10's are 8 10's. In the 100's column, 300's and 100 is 400. So together, those two partial products make 480. So, 30 times 16 is 480. Let's look at another example where we're not going to draw the array, and I'll show you how you would write this down on pencil if you want to do it without drawing a big array. And we're going to give the example of 37 times 60. Well, we want to start by breaking apart the two-digit number that's not a multiple of 10. 60 is a multiple of 10. So we're going to break apart the 37. We're going to think of it as 30 and 7, right? And it's 30 times 60 and 7 times 60. But I need you to know in the future you're going to see these two different uh, multiplication problems put in parentheses to help you keep in mind the order of operations which says we're going to multiply these two um, partial products before we add them together. So get used to seeing them in parentheses. You don't need to write them in parentheses for now when you're solving them, but while you are solving these I do want do want you to write down the two partial products before you do any multiplying. 
When you do multiply them, go ahead and write your answer down underneath your first partial product. This will help your algebra teachers in the future. And 30 times 60 is 1800. And 7 times 60 is 420. So we're going to combine those two, 1800 plus 420, which for me might be a little too hard to answer horizontally like this to try to solve it. So I'm going to set them up vertically. Much easier for me to solve. When I add my zeros in the ones column, I get zero ones. Zero tens and two tens give me two tens. Eight hundreds and four hundreds give me twelve hundreds. So I'm going to carry that one, and that'll give me one thousand plus another one thousand is going to give me two thousand two hundred twenty. So, so the answer to our problem: thirty-seven times sixty is two thousand two hundred twenty.